Hey again, it's Jason, and I'm about to take you on a quick trip from the Rose Farm down to the Lavender Farm, which is just a few minutes down the river and on the other side, but I got there by car. I delivered some roses to the owner, Jody, who was kind enough to take me for a quick tour of the gardens there, which are beautiful, so stay tuned for that. But she also gave me some quick tips on varieties of lavender, care of lavender, and even some insights into the lavender business. So stick around, I'll take you through that on this quick tour. Let's have a look at these gardens. Wow, look at those delphiniums. St. John's work. Our bees love these. Yeah, that's tall though, right? Eh? Yeah, it's really tall. That's gorgeous. use St. John's Wort to make some of our products. So hidden in the gardens are all kinds of herbs and flowers that we're actually using to make our soap and spa products and other things. Including this echinacea, which is going to come into bloom Yes. quite soon. The Zoom first few are, are popping up. So what kinds of varieties of lavender do you grow here? Mostly English lavender. Mm -hmm. um, a few varieties of French, but mostly um, head coat and menstead. English lavender. Nice. Now, I think when I came through last time I saw some of them that might have been more like the intermediate varieties with the sort of grayish foliage. Yes. Um, stronger. I guess it's almost like, I don't know, how would you describe the scent? It's like the English lavender, I like it's like uh, a fine scent. Yeah, the English is more sweet and floral and mm -hmm. the, the French is intense, so that's right. what we're using for our spa products. Oh, okay. But we grow mostly culinary lavender, so mm -hmm. we supply rain or shine ice cream in Vancouver with their culinary lavender for the honey lavender ice cream, and kombucha makers and bakers, and so yeah, the, the English has that lovely floral taste rather than soapy if you're trying to eat the intermediate. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that's something I'd, I'd people ask me a little bit. I made a little video on lavender a while back, and people have asked, um, what's the best culinary lavender? And I, I, I sort of gave them the, the sort of platitude the better it smells, the better it tastes. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of holds true, mm -hmm. I guess. If something sells, smells really, really strong and camphorated, yeah. and it's not going to taste that good. I also like the darker lavender varieties for culinary use because you can see the buds mm -hmm. in the baking or in whatever you have it. So um, it, it looks prettier too, as well as the taste. You got a rose peeking out here. We do. Sort of a landscape variety, right? Or... Yeah. And your dogwood's still in bloom? Dogwood's still in bloom. Oh, there's another rose. Lady of Shalot. Lady of Shalot. It's smokebush in the background. Yes. Let me see. Get that. And I love it with the um, Japanese forest grass. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been a very good spring for roses. Yeah, it's been a bit wet for roses. Yeah, not like really warm. Yeah. We'll see, that's just not what you think at Yeah, but you know, the thing is, um, just getting a look at some of the lower foliage here. You can see it does get a little bit of that black spot, mm -hmm. and usually they get that really big flush out of black spot early in the wet season for okay. us here. And so if you're, a, if, you're, if you're pretty vigilant right at that time of year, and get some of that leaf debris or litter that's down at the base there off and pick off some of the, the foliage, maybe do a light prune after the first flowering. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of spraying, I don't do a whole lot, but a baking soda spray. Like, okay. You know, five mils of baking soda in a, in a liter of water with a little bit of the dish soap just to help it to stick. Mm -hmm. You can maybe knock down some of that black spot. Yeah. I mean, not every variety responds as well but you can you can knock it down a little bit and then over winter um with uh, bordeaux mix or something like that to help okay. hold off the, the spores wow that's a nice garden too it's like everywhere you look though you've got you've got <laughs> nice gardens here yeah we try and make every every angle nice so like business wise though uh you get you get visitors here and yes. so part of your business is, you know, the growing and, and, and selling of lavender, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have lavender products as well. Yeah. But 
it, would it be inappropriate to call this kind of an agritourism business? No, that's know? exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah. So in the lavender bloom, which is happening right now, sort of mid June to July 26th, this year is our season. So we have people come and they want to see the lavender and experience it growing and smell it and take photos. And then in our shop, they can buy all the things that we make with it. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. And then they can also try lavender ice cream and lavender scones and baking and buy our culinary nap lavender. So we try and have people be able to experience every sort of aspect of the lavender. Okay, I'm not ignoring you, but I, I saw a nice, I saw a nice dog so I, <laughs> I just went wandering. <laughs> no problem. Wow, look at that. That's just great. I love this one as it fades. It just gets more and more beautiful. I love how horizontal it is. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Do you do, um, you do events here as well? We do wedding ceremonies um, and photos mm -hmm. and um, some retreats. Very cool. Yeah. Let's sneak it over. Nice cat. I'm not in very good shape either. That's okay. It's just, as I said, I'm scared. Yeah, you know, some are just better than others. Is this, is this, um, is that, is that Topaz Jewel? I didn't plant this particular one. Some I planted and some I inherited. Um, and I don't have the names for some. So, well, I think it's Topaz Jewel. Okay. And just to make you feel a little better, if you went to my garden at exactly right now, you'd see Topaz Jewel in exactly the same condition. Oh, that's a relief. Uh, you see a lot of this stippling on the leaves here. Yeah. So I'm going to try to focus in on that. That stippling on the leaves, it's a um, leaf hopper. It's a little okay. insect that comes around and just gets scratches up on the leaves and leaves yeah. these yellow marks. And it's a very short-lived problem in the garden. Okay, that's but, good news. But then, of course, it just leaves the damage there for the rest mm -hmm. of the season. So, uh, fighting it, uh, I found a little bit, you can use the yellow stick cards, like the monitoring cards, okay. that, uh, that they use in horticulture. You just put those up and it'll, it'll chop a whole bunch of them oh. and get them off. Uh, you use a lot of the, the, uh, the Japanese forest grass. Yeah, I, I love how it lights up the shade, and especially here where we have the honey locust trees, um, and the, the grass brings that dark yellow, uh, bright yellow, into the shade. Fantastic. I've had fun experimenting with all the types of flowers that look nice with the water. So, what's well, you know, the people say about my rose farm, and they're like, Oh, well, you have a rose garden. I'm like, well, yeah, there are roses in the garden. That's, <laughs> that's kind of the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. You, you mix a little bit, you yeah. play around, you get them all looking good together. Yeah. These, I wish those were out for you. These are the Spherocephalon, a yes. drumstick allium, and they are my favorite. They're so whimsical and fun. I mean, I like them already. Are, are in these this... the ones that do like almost like the fireworks type thing? Like no, the these the are sort of, yeah, these are sort of egg shaped. Mm -hmm. And they um, are like half green and half purple, and then they go all purple. They're really fun. Send me a picture. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some good shots um, in, in here. Oh, you see, this is really, really nice. So, you know, people will ask me the question uh, about la growing lavender mm -hmm. is, you know, what do you need to succeed with it? You know, one thing that's kind of like a standard piece of advice is you can't have winter wet. No. You gotta have good drainage. Gotta have good drainage. What else? Uh, full sun. Full sun? Yeah. Full okay. sun and good drainage. And, and you have to prune it, yeah, otherwise it gets leggy and lanky and it just doesn't give you that full lavender um, thriving bush. It's kind of like long branches sticking out. and. Doesn't... So what's, what's the timing on the tree? So we prune um, after it finishes flowering and then uh, again in fall to make sure that it's growing into winter with a really good shape. Fantastic. So do you get two blooms? On, on we year? do, yeah. So our field rose, which we'll probably go to soon, we cut those uh, probably next week. Um, and so we'll get another bloom on those. They'll bloom again at the end of August. This lavender here, we just let it bloom until it goes gray um, for people to take photos in and, okay, and come visit. And so we don't get a bloom again on Yeah, this it makes sense. I mean, if you, if you cut it all down, 
you know, to maximize your bloom, you're really going to cut out your your tour season a little bit. Exactly. Right? So this this is just for the bees and for the visitors. But and look those at rows, all that echinacea. It is so spectacular when it blooms, uh, surrounded by the, the delicate like clouds of lavender, and then this huge, bold, uh, pink echinacea. It's really one of my favorite times of the year. And beautiful fountain. So. You mentioned you've been here for a couple of years, but for three, three or four years, and this was established before that. So a lot of the hardscape was here, or yeah. what, what have you added yourself? So the hardscape was here nine years ago, and I've done some editing because, yes. as you know, gardens are constantly evolving, and the tree will grow up, and all of a sudden everything around is in shade and not happy. So I pulled some things out and replaced some things. Um, added a lot of climbing roses. There were no climbing roses here, and I love climbing roses. Um, uh, my favorite kind of garden is the romantic English garden, so that's that's essential to have climbing roses climbing over things with that. So I planted some Eden climbing roses and that are beautiful and honeymoon. Yeah, it's got to be pretty intimidating with a nice garden like this to like take those first those first edits. Right? Yes, it was quite scary, but you just gotta go for it. So they'll be by the car now and then they'll be daily us. Yeah. Daily us. Get a little close up here. That's our that's our feed. Yeah. And sorry, just gonna sneak over and see some delphiniums. <laughs> why not? I thought I liked the blue ones, but then we have these these dusty rose ones and I don't know. I really like them too. It's really nice. Super nice. There we go. So two cuts a year. You yeah. dr you dry. You cut and you bundle. Dry the yeah, yep. cut and bundle like end of June, beginning of July, depending on the year. Hang it to dry, and then um, you just give a trim and fall, make sure that it's going to work. That's fantastic. And we planted 500 new baby lavender this fall. Okay. Uh, specifically for oil production, which mm -hmm. we like to do. So which step did you go with, with Grosso or? Well, um, we went with Mayette, okay. which is the highest quality English lavender essential oh, oil in the world. It's world famous for um, just like the sweet scent. So the English lavenders, uh, they have less oil, mm -hmm. but it's extremely high quality. Oh, there's another smoke bush. You like your smoke bush. Yeah. Me too. Have you done anything with nine buck? Same similar colors. I have but... some. Yeah, yeah, I love the nine buck. The other uh, shrub with dark dramatic foliage that I love is the black lace elderberry. Oh, oh isn't that great? It's spectacular. Just the creamy pink blossoms that come out. It's just. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that visit to Tuscan Farm Gardens in Abbotsford. It was an excellent trip for me. Love seeing what they're doing there. Now, before you get any funny ideas to just Google the place and drive on over for a tour of those gardens, I need to let you know that you do need tickets to attend those gardens. Uh, just like every other small farmer, Jody's had to make some adjustments to the way she does business, and that includes controlling access and providing social distancing on the site. Uh, they are open for tours at uh, Tuscan Farm Gardens until July 26th of this year. That's 2020 if you're watching it, uh, contemporary to when I put it out. Otherwise, do check their website for open hours in coming summer. Thank you so much for watching.